Hi, my name is Robert. I'm one of your instructors here at CDL College. Today we'll be doing a pre-trip inspection on our B truck. Uh, our student today is Nathan. Um, as we do our pre-trip, any part of the vehicle you're required to inspect, you must thoroughly inspect and teach it to the tester. Okay? I give you some phrases that will help you with your pre-trip. Anything that's made out of metal or plastic, what are we looking for? We're looking that the item is not bent, it's not broken, it's not cracked on its way to broken, and everything's securely mounted or it falls off the vehicle. Anything that has a fluid in it, you need to tell me, or tell the tester, that you see or no visible leaks. Anything with air, you must tell the tester that you hear or no audible leaks, okay? What's the other item? Rubber. Anything made out of rubber, what are we looking for? We're looking for no abrasions, like a rub spot. No bulges, which is a soft spot. No cuts to compromise. Again, everything securely mounted. Fluids, no visible leaks. Air, no audible leaks. These will help you inspect every item with the seat belt on the truck. Now, I, I tell people I offer a pattern. If you start at the top of the page and work your way down and work across each line like we learn in school, it'll help you. There's a lot of items you need to do. Top to bottom, uh, finish each section before you go to the next. Okay? So, we're going to start off with Form 1. Well, the opening instructions for the test are, I would like you to conduct a pre-trip inspection as outlined in the driver's CDL handbook. Point 2, touch or demonstrate how you know each item's in good, safe working order. You must identify any defect or you may not get credit for the item. You'll only do a portion of a complete vehicle inspection. I'll give you instructions prior to each portion to be inspected. Do you have any questions? This is basically how every test starts off, okay? So you don't have to know the name, but you have to tell me what things you might see that would make it unsafe to operate the vehicle. Realize any part of this vehicle that you're required to inspect, if that causes an accident, the accident and all repercussions become your fault for not inspecting the vehicle. Okay. All right, let's start off with form one. The instructions. I would like you to inspect the front of the vehicle the engine compartments, steering items, and all items on the front of the on the driver's front axle. So when you approach the vehicle, you're looking for three things that start with L. Start at the top. What do we got up there? We got lights. So let's talk about all of the lights on the front of the vehicle. What is their condition? Not bent, not broken, not cracked, securely mounted. Additionally, with lights, we need them to be clean. So you need to tell the tester they're clean. The second part, you're looking to see if the vehicle is leaning to one side or the other. If it's leaning, most likely it's suspension, tire, or extremely bad load. The third L, you're looking underneath the vehicle to make sure that it's not leaking. If it's losing fluids, it probably won't finish the day's work. Okay? okay. We start the engine compartment on the passenger side because we finish on the driver's front axle. When you do the engine, you are required to do three components, how they are driven. Three fluids, level and no leaks, general hose, power steering hose, and belt. So starting at the top, we have our first uh, fluid, the coolant reservoir. What's the condition of the reservoir? Well, it's currently not bent, broken, or cracked. It is securely mounted due to the fact that it has a fluid in it. We need to make sure there are no leaks. And additionally, on this vehicle, it has a side glass, which we see has fluid in it, and we know that it's at operating range. The, frame, uh, the phrase operating range is at or below full, but above at. It's a key phrase. Next, we come to our first component. The alternator, what's it made out of? Metal, so what are you gonna tell me first? The alternator's not bent, not broken, not cracked. It is securely mounted. Additionally, you need to tell me how it's driven, and if you look at the front, you see that it is belt driven. When you mention the belt, you need to talk about the condition of the belt. It's made out of rubber, so tell me there's no abrasions, bulges, cuts. It's securely mounted. Additionally, with belts, you need to pull or push on them, making sure there's no more than three quarters of an inch of play. Correct adjustment is half to three quarters of an inch. Now, if you look down through here, you'll see where the bottom radiator hose attaches to the water pump. The water pump is your second component. Water pump's made out of metal, so start off with general condition being not bent, not broken, not cracked, securely mounted. Additionally, you want to make sure where it has a fluid to tell the tester there's no visible leaks. And if you look through in there, you will also see that that water pump is belt driven. Now, you can reinspect the belt, but you only need to do that once on this approach. Okay? So on this side, we have our coolant reservoir. We have our first component alternator, our second component, a water pump. 
And let's do a general hose. Let's pick this one. No abrasions, no bulges, no cuts, no visible leaks, and securely mounted. Okay, let's go to the other side. Again, starting at the top, we're going to describe the procedure for checking oil. So you would tell the tester that you'd pull it out, wipe it off, reinsert it, pull it back out, key phrase again, operating range, at or below full, but at or below full, but above add. Coming down, our second uh, fluid is, or our third fluid, I'm sorry. Our third fluid is the power steering reservoir. What is the condition of the reservoir? Well, it's not bent, broken, or cracked. It is securely mounted. It deals with the fluid. Tell me there are snow leaks. Additionally, you need to tell me it's in the operating range. They want to hear about the power steering hose all by itself. So you tell me that this hose has no abrasions, no bulges, no cuts, no visible leaks, and it is securely mounted. The last component on the engine is the air compressor. It's made out of metal, so what do you tell me first? It's not bent, it's not broken, it's not cracked. It is securely mounted. Additionally, you're going to tell me you hear no audible leaks because it deals with air, and because the drive is behind this cover, we know it is gear driven. Those are the items on the engine you must talk about. Okay. From there, we go to our steering, starting at the top. The steering shaft is not bent, broken, or cracked, and it is securely mounted. It goes into the steering box. Again, not bent, not broken, not cracked, securely mounted. It deals with the fluid, so tell me there's no leaks. The pitman arm is not to be bent, broken, or cracked. It needs to be securely mounted. Now, you can tell me about the nut and bolt or the castle nut and cotter key, but in telling me it's securely mounted, have you not checked those items as securement hardware? Coming back, you have the drag link. Not bent, not broken, not cracked, securely mounted. Again, you can tell me about the castle nuts and cotter keys, but in telling me it's securely mounted, you check them. It's better to say too much than not enough. Coming back, you have the upper steering arm. Condition, not bent, not broken, not cracked, securely mounted. Okay, you have the lower steering arm. It, not, not bent, not broken, not cracked, securely mounted. You have the lower drag link. Not bent, not broken, not cracked, securely mounted. Those are the items on the steering that you must talk about. From there, we're gonna do our suspension. Always start at the front. The first part is the front spring mount. What is its condition? Well, it's currently not bent, broken, or cracked. It is securely mounted. Coming back, you talk about your springs. They are not to be bent, broken, or cracked, securely mounted. Additionally, with springs, you need to make sure they're aligned, no scissoring. Coming back, you have two U-bolts. Their condition is not to be bent, broken, or cracked and need to be securely mounted. As you come back, you have your shock absorber. Not bent, not broken, not cracked, securely mounted. Additionally, shocks have a fluid, so tell me you see no leaks. The rear spring mount is not to be bent, broken, or cracked and needs to be securely mounted. Now we've completed our, our suspension. From there, you're going to do your braking system on out through tire and wheel. So you will start with the airline or airlines, whichever is appropriate. On this, on the front, there's only one airline. So the condition of that airline, you need to tell me there's no abrasions, no bulges, no cuts, no audible leaks, and it is securely mounted. Goes into the brake chamber or brake canister, a piece of metal that you need to tell me is not bent, not broken, not cracked, securely mounted. Additionally, it deals with air, so tell me you hear no leaks. Coming out of it is a slack adjuster and rod. Condition, not bent, not broken, not cracked, securely mounted. Additionally, you pull out on the slack adjuster, making sure there's no more than one inch of play. We will do an expansion on that shortly. From there, you will go to the brake shoes. The brake shoes, condition, not bent, not broken, not cracked, securely mounted. Additionally, brake shoes, you need to tell me that they're not dangerously thin or that they have a minimum quarter inch of thickness. Additionally, you need to check for signs of heat, which is cracking or glazing, and you need to make sure they're free of grease and oil. Coming out, you have the brake drum, a piece of metal, so tell me it's not bent, broken, or cracked, securely mounted. Additionally, with brake drums, you need to make sure there's no signs of heat, which is bluing or bluish colored. Coming out, you have the inner wheel. It is not to be bent, broken, or cracked, and needs to be securely mounted. The inner sidewall, same thing, no abrasions, no bulges, no cuts, no audible leaks, and it's securely mounted. When you come to the treads, you need to talk about a bunch of things. First and foremost, you need to make sure that it's evenly worn. It's not cupping or wearing to one side. Second, the front is required to have a minimum of 432 seconds tread depth. It's made out of rubber, so what do you tell me? 
no abrasions, no bulges, no cuts, no audible leaks securely mounted. Outer sidewall the same way, no abrasions, no bulges, no cuts, no audible leaks securely mounted. Outer wheel is not to be bent, broken or cracked and needs to be securely mounted. As you work your way in, use the valve stem to remind you to check the pressure, either with a gauge or by thumping it with a mallet. Lug nuts, not bent, not broken, not cracked, securely mounted. How do we know that? Three factors. No rust trails, no shiny threads, no damage around the hole. The last item on the front approach is the hub seal. Condition, not bent, not broken, not cracked, securely mounted. There's a fluid in there, so tell me there's no leaks. The next portion of your vehicle inspection will be form two, side approach. Instructions, I would like you to inspect the side of the vehicle, anything unique to the other side, and one rear axle. So again, starting at the top, we're gonna to talk about the mirror bracket. It's condition, it's not bent, broken or cracked, and it is securely mounted. Coming down, we're gonna talk about the door handle. Not bent, not broken, not cracked, securely mounted. Coming around, you're gonna talk about the inner door handle. Not bent, not broken, not cracked, securely mounted. You're gonna tell me about the hinges. Not bent, not broken, not cracked, securely mounted. Also check the pins in the hinges by lifting on the door. Next, you're gonna talk about the seal. It should have no abrasions, bulges, or cuts, and should be securely mounted. This one is damaged. As the instruction says, anything that is damaged, you need to report to maintenance. This is done in a written form. So your answer is, I'm telling maintenance. By giving this written form, one of two things will occur. Either this shop or maintenance technician will certify that it's not a problem and it's still ultimately your decision if you feel it's safe to drive or not, or they're obligated to repair the vehicle before it goes back into service. Okay? okay. Continuing. As we come down, we want to talk about our steps. What is their condition? Well, they're currently not bent, broken, or cracked. They are securely mounted. Additionally, with steps, you need to tell me they're free of debris, things to make you slip and fall. Coming down, let's talk about our fuel cap. You need to tell me three things about the cap. One, it is securely mounted. Two, and you don't have to show them, but I want you to see, it needs to have a safety chain, and most importantly, the rubber seal. Okay? You don't have to show them, but you have to tell them about it. I'd like you to tell them about the front of the box. Condition, not bent, not broken, not cracked, securely mounted. Additionally, with the box, no holes. If you have a refrigeration unit, the cold's getting out. If you have cargo, water's getting in. No holes. Okay. Side of the truck, same thing. Not bent, not broken, not cracked, securely mounted, no holes. You need to talk about the lights on the side of the truck. Their condition is not to be bent, broken, or cracked. They need to be securely mounted. Again, additionally clean, yellow or amber on the sides, red in the rear. Coming on around, we're gonna talk about the frame. Continuing, we're gonna talk about the frame. Not bent, not broken, not cracked, no illegal welds. Key phrase, and everything is securely mounted to it. This is the core of your vehicle. Coming across, you have your drive shafts. Not bent, not broken, not cracked, securely mounted. The item unique to the other side of the vehicle is your exhaust. Condition, not bent, not broken, not cracked, securely mounted. Additionally, you need to tell me there are no leaks, which is black soot anywhere but the end of the pipe. Okay, from there, we're gonna move on to suspension. Starting at the front, tell me about the front spring mounts. Not bent, not broken, not cracked, securely mounted. Next, tell me about the springs. Condition, not bent, not broken, not cracked, securely mounted. Again with springs, tell me they are aligned, no scissoring. If you look further back in there, you'll see there are two U-bolts. Moving back, you will see there are two U-bolts. Condition, not bent, not broken, not cracked, securely mounted. On the other end of the spring is the other spring mount. Not bent, not broken, not cracked, securely mounted. From there, we're going to go to the braking system. If you start with the airlines, just like we did on the front, only there's two to each brake chamber. So the condition of the airlines is they have no abrasions, no bulges, no cuts, no audible leaks, and they are securely mounted. They go into the brake chambers or brake canisters. They are not to be bent, broken, or cracked and need to be securely mounted. Additionally, they deal with air. Tell me you hear no leaks. If you look across there, you'll see the slag adjuster and rod coming out of the brake chambers on the back side. You need to tell me their general condition is not bent, broken, or cracked, and they need to be securely mounted. 
Now to check the slack adjuster and rod on the back of the truck, you must release the brakes, otherwise you won't be able to pull on it to verify there's no more than one inch of play. From there, if you look across, you can actually see the brake shoes on this truck. They're getting close to being due. Condition, not bent, not broken, not cracked, securely mounted. Additionally, you need to make sure they're not dangerously thin or have a minimum quarter inch of thickness. Additionally, no signs of heat, which is cracking or glazing, and they need to be free of grease and oil. Coming out, you see that the brake drum is not bent, broken, or cracked. It is securely mounted. Additionally, you show, see no signs of heat, which is bluing or bluish color. Coming out, you have the inner wheel. Condition, not bent, not broken, not cracked, securely mounted. Inner sidewall has no abrasions, no bulges, no cuts, no audible leaks, securely mounted. Now, when you come out to the tread, anytime you got dual wheels, tell me about the tread on both tires. First and foremost, Note that it's evenly worn. On the rear of the truck, it's only required to have a minimum of two thirty seconds of an inch tread depth. It's made, they're made out of rubber, so tell me there's no abrasions, no bulges, no cuts, no audible leaks securely mounted. Inner sidewall, same thing. Not bent, not broken, not cracked, securely mounted. No audible leaks. Inner wheels are not bent, broken, or cracked, securely mounted. Additionally, anytime you have dual wheels, tell me there is no gap between the wheels and no debris or dead animals between the tires. Outer sidewall, same thing. No abrasions, no bulges, no cuts, no audible leaks, securely mounted. Outer wheel, not bent, not broken, not cracked, securely mounted. Again, use the valve stem to remind you to check the pressure, either with a gauge or by thumping it with the mallet. Lug nuts, not bent, not broken, not cracked, securely mounted. How do we know that? No rust trails, no shiny threads, no damage around the hole. Hubs, axles, not bent, not broken, not cracked, securely mounted. They deal with the fluid, so tell me there's no leaks. Coming back, you have your mud flap. Not bent, not broken, not cracked, securely mounted. But uh-oh, our mud flap is torn. The instructions say you must identify any defects or you may not get credit. So you're gonna report it to maintenance. It's not a, a big issue, but the test instructions say report any defects, and that is less than perfect. Is it a problem? No. Okay. Next, you have your lift gate. Condition, not bent, not broken, not cracked, securely mounted. If you look through the crack, look through the crack, you're gonna talk about the door. Not bent, not broken, not cracked, securely mounted. If you look in there, you'll see a roll latch. Not bent, not broken, not cracked, securely mounted. There's also a seal all the way across the bottom of the door. Tell them it appears to have no abrasions, bulges, cuts, and is securely mounted. On the rear of the truck, it is required to have 100% reflective tape. This is a little rough. You might report it to maintenance, but the rear of the vehicle is required to have 100% reflective tape. I'd like you to reiterate that your lights and reflectors are not bent, broken, or cracked, securely mounted, clean red in the rear, yellow, or amber everywhere else. But what about this one? Okay, that reflector's damaged. Is it going to take the truck out of service? No, but I want you to report it to maintenance. These are the items on Form 2 side approach that you must inspect. Now that we've finished Form 1 front approach, Form 2 side approach, the next part of your test will be considered the external light check. What you will be doing, and I'm going to have Nathan actually do it, is you will be getting in the truck, turning the key to the on position without the run motor running, and turn the headlights to the full on position. Well, that, well, let's just do it from the outside. So, when the lights are on, starting at the top, you're going to tell me that the clearance lights are working. You say clearance, the tester will repair repeat clearance back to you. Then you will tell them about the headlights. You say headlights, he'll say headlights. You will click the brights and say brights, he will say brights. Turn on the right turn signal and say right, left turn signal and say left, four ways and say four ways, okay? You'll direct him to the side of the vehicle. You're gonna tell him clearance on the side of the vehicle. You're gonna talk about the left turn signal, which will be here and you will turn on the four ways and say four ways. Then you'll direct him to the rear of the vehicle. Again, starting at the top, working your way down, the lights across the top are called clearance. You say clearance, he says clearance. You'll tell him about the tail lights. You say tail, he says tail. You will step on the brake and say brake, he will say brake. You'll turn on the right turn signal and say right, left turn signal and say left, four ways and four, then he'll say four ways. You'll direct him to the passenger side of the vehicle. On the passenger side of the vehicle, 
you will say clearance, he will say clearance. You will say right turn signal with the right turn signal on, he'll say right. You'll turn on the four ways and say four ways. You must operate. Tell him what you're operating. Direct, operate, and tell him each and every light in each and every location. Next, the last part of your vehicle inspection is called the in-cab inspection. The instructions you will hear. I would like you to conduct an in-cab inspection as outlined in the driver's CDL handbook, including a safe start slash engine start. These will be your instructions. Okay, so you're gonna start off with five areas of safety. The first thing you're gonna inspect, it's the only item that my phrases don't work on, the seat belt. What are we looking for? We're looking that it's not torn, it's not cut, it's not frayed, so tell me it's not torn, cut, or frayed. Next, you need to verify that it latches, that it's securely mounted, and that it unlatches so you don't have to cut it. Second, you're required to carry spare fuses. Freightliner actually puts them in a fuse box. I tell you, use a cubby holder, and mind you, where would you keep a box of spare fuses? Coming back, your fire extinguisher. You need to tell me three things about the fire extinguisher. One, that it is fully charged and in the green. Two, it is securely mounted. And three, by the logos, it is the correct type, A, B, C. Behind it, you will see a red box. In that red box, you need to tell me are the number three color red reflective triangles. Their condition, they should not be bent, broken, or cracked, and they need to be safely stowed or securely mounted so they're not on your feet. Coming across, do your city horn, highway horn. Five areas of safety, six items. Seat belt, fuses, fire extinguisher, triangle, and horns. Okay. Okay. So next, what's right outside your air horn? Talk about your mirrors. Okay, condition. They're currently not bent, broken, or cracked. They are securely mounted. Additionally, with mirrors, they need to be clean and they can have no illegal stickers. Same with your windshield. Not bent, not broken, not cracked. Securely mounted, clean, no illegal stickers. Five safety, two glass. Next, there are nine items you can do with the key on and the engine off. First thing I want to do is draw your attention to the point above my finger. When you turn the key on, you will see that the tractor ABS light comes on, goes off. The light going on says the light works. The light going off says the braking system is working. Then I tell you to put your mix valve on heat and defrost, turn on the fan, and physically check the defroster. Physically check the heater. Next, push the button for the washers. Tell me that your wipers are not bent, broken, or cracked, securely mounted. Uh-oh, we don't have any fluid. What are we gonna do? We're going to report it to maintenance. Okay. Next, even though you've done your external light check, there are four lights on the dash you must check. So turn on your left turn signal, your right turn signal, pull out on the base, and your four ways will come on, which you can cancel with the turn signal switch, and turn on your headlights and verify the high beam indicator. Those are the nine items you can do with the key on and the engine off. So now we're ready for a safe start. What is a safe start? You're gonna verify that the brake is set. The vehicle needs to be in neutral. You need to depress the clutch and actually start the vehicle. Once you start the vehicle, I want you to do your instrumentation in a W. Starting off, your oil pressure is rising or at an operating range. Water temperature is rising or at an operating range. The reason for the W is you have a small digital voltmeter. You need to tell the tester that you're between 12 and 14 volts. And finally, your air gauges are rising or at an operating range. At this point, the only thing you have left is your brake test. Okay, so what's the first test in the brake test? You're gonna verify the parking brake. So you're gonna place the vehicle in gear and you're actually gonna tug against the parking brake. It works. Next, you're gonna release the parking brake, making sure your wheels are straight. You're gonna roll forward to about five mile an hour. You're gonna apply the brake and tell me there's no pulls in the wheels. Do not set the brake, shut the engine off. Leave the vehicle in gear. Turn the key back on. Next, you're gonna check for leaks. How do we check for leaks? You're gonna tell the tester you're going to hold your foot on the brake for one minute, making sure you don't lose three PSI. So, put your foot on the brake, la di da di da di da di One minute, no loss, three PSI. Next, 
you're going to tell your tester you're going to check that your low air pressure warning devices, the light and buzzer, come on before 60 psi. Tell them, then pump them, pump them down till they come on. Light and buzzer. Next, you're going to tell them you're checking your emergencies, your spring brakes, your valves pop out between 40 and 20 psi. Again, tell him, then pump the brakes until they come out. Next, you're going to do another safe start so we know that our brake is set. We're going to place the vehicle in neutral and we're going to start the vehicle up. Okay? Next, you're going to raise the idle to 1,000 to 1,200 RPMs. You're going to build air pressure. So raise it up 1,000, 1,200 RPMs. You're going to build air pressure. You're going to time that 85 to 100 takes less than 45 seconds. Freightliner doesn't give you 85 on the gauge. Straight up and down is 75. Slightly past that point, you will count. Give him a number how long it takes 85 to 100. I'm going to time off of the top gauge. I'm going to call that 85. 1,001, 2, 26, 27 seconds to 100 psi. You're going to continue building air pressure to 120 to 140, at which time you'll hear the governor kick out. I will drop the idle just before it does so you can clearly hear the governor kick out. All right. That was the governor kicking out. At this point, stop. Go over your complete vehicle inspection. Say on your front approach, you forgot to tell them that the alternator is belt driven, and that you'd inspect that belt, no abrasions, bulges, cuts, securely mounted. Additionally, no more than half to three quarters of an inch of plate. You would regain those points. Say you forgot to do the clearance lights on the passenger side of the truck. Well, if you tell them there's clearance, right turn signal and four ways, you regain that point. Up until the time you complete your in cab, you can go back to any part, re-verbalize it and get credit. Next, if you're pumping along looking for your light and buzzer and your valve pops out because you forgot to turn the key on, you have the opportunity to start the vehicle, build the pressure back up, push the brake valve in, shut the engine back off, turn the key back on and go back to searching for that light and buzzer. You are not in a hurry. Your test is scheduled for three hours. You're not in a hurry. Additionally, as long as you're doing it correctly and darkness does not end the test, you will be allowed to complete your test. Take your time. Make sure you've got it. Use your patterns. Be thorough. If the tester puts you back on an item that you've already mentioned, he is letting you know that you have not given him enough information to get credit for the item. They will only do this a few times. If you don't take the hint and slow down, then they'll let you complete it and you probably won't pass. Be thorough and be slow. You got it. Questions, comments, and concerns.